Well, good morning, New Hope Community Church. I'm so excited to be with you today and share God's word. Um, let's jump in to the message in Mark um, chapter 6. We find this story that is mentioned in all four of the Gospels, and it's this. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountain to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost, and they cried out because they were all afraid and terrified. Immediately he spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. And then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. Let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you for this morning, and thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you bring wisdom and understanding and transformation. And so, Lord, we pray that you would do that today as we hear your word and as we reflect on the awesome miracle of Jesus and the life that he brings. Um, transform our hearts today. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Storms are a part of life. And if you've followed the Lord even for a short amount of time, you know that man, life can hit pretty hard. Um, you know, there are many kinds of storms, you know, and I think that with the Lord, um, there are those kinds of storms where the Lord actually sends a storm and it's to turn you around, kind of like Jonah. Um, Jonah was in the boat and he was going the wrong direction. The Lord's like, I need you going in that direction. So he sends a storm to get Jonah going in the right direction. Um, but if you follow the Lord and you love the Lord and you're walking with him, um, I believe that like this story that God actually sends a storm and he sends you into the storm um, because it produces something in you. While you are in the storm, God is able to teach you something that he couldn't teach you any other way. Um, and I want us to just take a moment to think about our life and think about um, maybe one difficulty or one challenge or one storm that you're going through right now. I just want you to just take a moment to reflect on that and think about that one fear, that one challenge, that one difficulty, that one thing that you're going through and keep that in, in the forefront of your mind. Uh, maybe it's a situation, a difficult situation. You don't know what to do, um, but you're maybe you're in the middle of a storm. Um, but I have a, a invitation for you today, and that is to make um, make room for the new reality that Jesus brings. Um, I think that most of us do have a faulty uh, reading on reality. I think the scars of life, you know, we go through life with hopes dashed and being disappointed and being left down. And, it, you know, we get scarred by certain relationships and different people or maybe situations or pains and losses. And we can get kind of crusty. And I think it teaches us almost to be a little bit negative. And I think that, you know, there are those sayings out there where we say maybe like, um, you know, you get what you deserve or nothing in life is free. Um, life's just one big battle. You got to tough it out. Um, that's the way it is. Some things will never change. Uh, maybe you've said some of these things. Maybe, um, you believe them yourself. I love, I love this one. I heard this one a lot growing up and that's nothing's free. <laughs> um, we get pessimistic and, we tend to stretch out the negative. I don't know if you've ever met, um, maybe just a crusty person or a salty person, just somebody kind of rough around the edges and then you talk to them and you're like, oh my gosh, they've lived a lot of life. And I, I, I see now kind of why they're like that. Um, but with Jesus, you know, um, when Jesus enters the scene, when Jesus comes on, you know, into our lives, he gives us a different way of looking at things. And what, 
what seems to be a reality or our like worldly, like, oh, I've learned from my experience. When you walk with the Lord and you're walking with those um, experiences and th- seeing the things that he's doing, you're like, whoa, you have a whole new um, take on reality. Uh, Jesus gives us a whole different perspective and a whole different reality. And it's actually the opposite of what we are just talking about. It's it's the new life that we have in Christ. Um, and so as we look back on this story, the story of the storm, um, as I read it, I place myself as the disciple in this story. And um, we see that um, one, one big, huge, um, major observation that I have here is that Jesus actually puts his disciples in the boat and he sends them into the into the storm. Jesus sends his disciples into the storm. He knows what's going to happen and he put them on the boat and he sent them out. Um, number two, um, Jesus, it, the Bible says that Jesus was on land and he could actually see what was happening. Um, this says that it happened at like the last hour of the night. And so this was around three or four in the morning and Jesus could actually see them. Jesus sees them. He sends them into the storm and Jesus sees them. And I would, um, just, uh, my observations in that is when, um, when he sees you, he see, he saw them when they were exhausted. He saw them when they were overwhelmed. He saw them when they, they wanted to give up and they just couldn't take it any further. Um, Jesus saw them. And number three, Jesus walks out to meet them. He sees their need. He sees their desperation. He walks out to meet them. And the disciples, um, it says, the Bible says they were terrified when they saw Jesus walking on the water and they're thinking, um, you know, in those days they believed the superstitions of the sea and the demons of the dark, deep depths of the sea. And so they see Jesus walking on the water and they're thinking, oh my gosh, it must be a ghost. And they're absolutely terrified. Um, And then um, Jesus actually speaks to his disciples. And as he's speaking to them, he's actually breathing words of encouragement and words of life. And he tells them, take courage. It is I. And that word, it is I, he's like, he is saying, it's the same phrase as I am. I am who I am. I am the one who can walk on the, on the water. I am the one who calms the storms. I, I am the great I am. So take courage. It is I and do not be afraid. Um, Jesus gets in the boat with them. Number five, Jesus gets in the boat with them and the storm stops. He doesn't even say or speak to the storm. It says Jesus gets in the boat and the storm stops. And verse 52, which is the thrust of our message, it's the key point of our message today. Um, I'm going to read it again, and it says this. Then he climbed in the boat with him, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves, and their heart was hardened. The disciples were amazed. But that word amazed isn't like, whoa, that was so awesome. It was like a freaked out, terrified, like a fear of God. And the reason, the reason why is because they didn't get it. They, it says that they did not understand the loaves. You see, before Jesus put them on the boat, he did this amazing miracle of feeding the five thousands. And, and then he puts them, he sends them out on the boat. And it says that the disciples didn't get it, that they, they didn't understand what Jesus had just done. And so they were totally freaked out and they couldn't, they couldn't put two and two together. And I would, I would submit to you today that this is not a story about God saving the disciples from a terrible storm. This is a story about epiphany, about a revelation, about who God is, about God revealing a a part of his character, a part of his nature on a deeper level to a group of men who had no understanding of, of, of who they were in the presence with. This is not about being saved from a storm. It's about knowing that God, that Jesus is God and Lord of all. 
um, they needed a different read on reality. Um, their reality is we're being wiped out by this storm and nobody can help us. Woe is me. Um, and, and, and then Jesus steps into the scene, walks on water. That is not reality. That's not normal. That must be a ghost. And yet, boom, Jesus flips what their minds think. And they're like questioning, is this really happening? And it's, it's Jesus. And he, again, um, they didn't get the loaves and the word of God says it's because their hearts were hardened. And the crazy thing is in the Bible, all through Mark, all through the gospels, when they describe hardened hearts, um, usually they're talking about the Pharisees. They're talking about the religious leaders who have all the knowledge and they have students and they're, you know, practicing the religious practices. And, and it says, but their hearts were hard. Their hearts were hardened. And this is the same word that they use when they're describing, um, the, the Pharisees or the disciples. They're saying the disciples hearts were hard. Um, they didn't get the loaves. They didn't get what the Lord did just a few hours ago. Um, the disciples were seeing miracle after miracle. They're walking with Jesus. They're seeing people being healed. They're seeing, um, you know, all these different things that the Lord is doing. Um, but their hearts are beginning to get hard. And I believe, man, they're, they're probably tired. They're exhausted. They're walking around with Jesus and they're seeing all these really cool things. And then, you know, I, I feel like that's easy to happen. You just, you kind of just become like not amazed anymore, or maybe just worn out and not, you know, kind of burnt out. And I believe that their hearts are getting hard because they're not reflecting. They're not processing what the Lord is doing, what Jesus is actually doing. And I think it's interesting because I think we can go through the Christian life and we can ourselves, we can listen to sermons and be engaged in awesome times of worship. And we can see God doing miracles and we're like, yeah, that's really cool. Um, but we ourselves, um, if we don't reflect, we can get hard and we, we can get hardened hearts. We can get crusty hearts. I remember, um, we had brought a group of kids up to a, a summer camp for the first time and it was so powerful. And these kids experienced the Lord like they never had before. And they were so excited. They came off the mountain. They were like, Oh, you know, and I'm going to fast and I'm going to, I'm going to give up my music. I'm going to give up. I'm not going to watch those movies anymore. I'm going to, so they're all talking about things that they're going to like take out of their lives because the Lord had convicted them so much and they're going to like fast and get rid of it all. And um, they were sharing this with the pastor and, you know, they came off the mountain. They're like, oh my gosh, pastor, guess what? It's not, it's not John, okay, or anybody you know, but they're like, guess what? And then they're, they're sharing their story. And that pastor looked at him and goes, that's not a biblical fast. No, not eating any food and only drinking water is a biblical fast. And all those kids are like, oh. <laughs> they had just been totally shut down. Like their hearts were so softened and so excited about what the Lord um, could do. And this person, um, this, this one pastor, like, you know, just was like, so um, like just a little hardness of heart, like couldn't see this like delicate face, faith, and then just kind of shut it down. But I think it's interesting because we can follow the Lord and we can hear all these really cool stories. Um, but I would submit to you today that it's not about getting information about God. It's not about listening to a good sermon. You know, that was really intellectual and I really got my, you know, challenged by it. It was really good, but I've heard better ones. Or, you know, I like listening to that guy because he's funny and I just feel inspired or whatever. It's not about hearing uh, stories about God and getting the information. It's about formation. It's about when God is doing something in your life, when you hear a sermon, when you see a miracle, when you see God's provision, like never before, when you step out in faith and try something new that you feel like the Lord is calling you to do. And you're like, okay, Lord, like uh, I need you to transform my thinking, be with me as I'm working out this fear and allowing the Lord to form and transform your life as you go through the Christian walk. Amen. So I think it's interesting that before, before Jesus sends his disciples out into the storm, um, we have the miracle of the feeding of 5,000. And this is, like I said before, this is the 
this is one of those main stories that this is actually um, sp like spoke about. It's recorded in all four gospels that this story is so ex important. It's so um, pivotal, like the disciples understanding about the loaves that it's in all four gospels along with the resurrection. This story is in all four gospels and we can see that um, you know, the disciples in that moment, you know, Jesus is preaching all day and it's getting late and there's they're out in the middle in the wilderness and they, they have about 5,000. And in those times, it says 5,000, only men were counted. So they're speculating that there could have been about 10,000 people there to listen to Jesus and Jesus is preaching and people are hungry for the, for his words and the disciples, they're getting irritated and they're getting annoyed. Like, okay, like, okay, like you spoke too long and they kind of get like we do. Like when we pray, we like tell Jesus what to do instead of like asking or just, um, so they're like, Hey Jesus, you need to like wrap it up. Hey, Hey, like we don't have any food. We're going to need to like now okay, now Jesus, we have a crisis because there's like 10,000 people here and they're all really hungry. Like this, this, this is, this could be, uh, can kind of blow up in our faces. And, um, Jesus, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus had compassion. And so while the disciples are looking at like the tangible, their idea of reality, like, oh my gosh, Jesus, the word of God says that Jesus had compassion on these people. And I think that, um, you know, sometimes when we have a false reading on reality, they were with Jesus, the bread of life. And here they are freaked out about food. And then they begin to, um, you lose compassion when you have a false sense of reality. You're with Jesus and, 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 and you're worried about food. Um, it's so interesting. We are doing the, we just finished our giving campaign and I've been so blessed, um, by, by the sermon, by the sermons and the testimonies that have come out of these past few weeks. And, um, and I'm just kind of amazed at the generosity of the Lord, the generosity, um, of our church and just the stories that are coming about that. But even that is like totally, like goes against the grain of what we what we think is right. You know, we think, okay, I need to reserve my funds. I need to save and and not spend and keep. And I don't want to be generous because I need to, you know, be careful. And and the Lord says, hey, like give, and it'll be given back to you. Like um, that, uh, you know, test me in this. See that I won't open if you won't give me a tithe, and and see that I will do this for you. And I love that, that the Lord's reality and and His way of thinking, that kingdom thinking, is totally different um, from from what is natural, what feels natural to us. And so this is where the disciples are at and Jesus has compassion and they lack the compassion. Um, and I think that a lot of times, like the disciples, we get discouraged and we're like, oh my gosh, like Jesus, like, what are you going to do? Like, I, you better do something because now we're in trouble here. Um, you know, this is not reality. You got your head stuck in the clouds. Like, come on. Um, but uh, Jesus is not worried about food. Jesus is like, hey, you are with one that is greater than Moses. Um, and so he asks them, what do you have? And then he takes, the, what they have is they have five loaves and two fish, and then he just keeps multiplying it. They take what they have, and then Jesus multiplies it, and everybody is fed. Not only are they fed, but they're satisfied. Um, okay, so I have been making sourdough bread lately. Um, I, I went on a little trip and my cousin sent me home with some starter. And so I've been working on my sourdough bread game. But anyways, it's, it's so amazing. It's super simple. Um, but also there's some technique and complications to it. But, but the ingredients are just water and flour, a little bit of oil and salt. And um, it's really cool how it all comes together. But the point is, in order to have bread, and, um, and, 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 and you have a sourdough starter and you grow it and it feeds and then you gotta make more and it's really a cool process. But you need those ingredients in order to make more bread. And so I love what Jesus does here. He takes the, the, the things that they have, what do you have? 
and then he literally makes something out of nothing, that he's able to multiply the bread without any ingredients except for what they had. And he was able to make more fish. He makes something out of nothing. Um, and with Jesus, I love that with Jesus, that there is abundance and that with Jesus, with all of these loaves and with all of these breads, I'm reminded of Moses. Moses, back in the wilderness, there was a miracle in the Old Testament where um, the whole nation of Israel was fed through manna and God gave them enough for one day. They were supposed to go out and collect what they needed for one day. So every day God gave them enough. God gave them enough. But with Jesus, there is abundance. There is satisfaction. I ate till I'm full and then there are leftovers. The word says that there were 12 baskets left over. Um, and the Lord, I mean, I can just imagine Jesus like, you're worried about food? Like one greater than Moses is with you. Um, and so this, this is where Jesus puts his disciples into the boat and he sends them into the storm and they are in the storm and they do not remember the loaves. The Lord just did this awesome, amazing feeding of 5,000 and they're fighting this storm. I think it, the storm might have been different if they were in the storm and they're like, man, like, Jesus, if they were on like one of those Jesus, you know, highs were like, oh my gosh, Jesus was so amazing. He did all these awesome things. And, and now we're like fighting the storm. Like, I don't understand why I don't, but I know he's so amazing and he'll, he'll help us get through. Um, but that is not the case with the disciples. Their hearts were hard. I believe and, and they were fighting. They were tired. They were overwhelmed. They were exhausted. They were fighting the storm all night. And I think, I think about myself. Okay. And I think about how I can, I can be sometimes like when I go through some hard, hard times, like in my flesh, one of my thoughts, and this is when I know, like I'm getting hard hearted. Um, like I think after all I've done for you, Lord, like I wonder as the disciples were like fighting through the storm and they were like, man, we just, we, we just serviced 10,000 people, all that food, all that, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, what were they thinking as they were going through this storm? And it says that their hearts were hard because they did not understand the loaves. Um, and I, I love that though. I, I do think that I'm, I'm thankful for the example of the disciples because I do think that we can, we can go from miracle to miracle or glory to glory and see God moving. And then, and then we're hit with the storm and it's like, poof what God just did, like we forget it and, and, and we get discouraged and overwhelmed in the middle of the storm. But Jesus takes um, what we think is reality and he flips it and he makes something out of nothing when there are no ingredients. Just remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. Um, they were in hundred years old and in their nineties and boom, no ingredients. Um, and, and yet, um, they have a son. Look at the Virgin Mary. No ingredients. And yet the son of God. Um, and so the Lord, this is the kind of power that Jesus has. He makes something out of nothing. Um, and so this morning, as at, at the beginning of the message, I, ha I had asked, like, think about that one storm. Think about that one trial or that struggle or that difficulty or that fear um, that you have. I want you to reflect back on that the thing that you're in the middle of, that situation, that difficulty, that storm that you're going through. And I want you um, to look at what you have and I want you to remember the loaves that even though you're in a storm right now, that our Lord is the Lord that can feed the 5,000, that he brings something out of nothing and I believe this, that we can only learn certain things when we um, go through storms. You cannot learn it any other way. Um, I have been through some pretty difficult seasons in life and I don't really want to get into everything now. Um, I could write a book, um, but I feel like we all could. But I know that um, 
calling my mom and and um that's like one of my things and let's just, let me just say this like let this be a plug for a community and small groups we need community we need other believers um that we can call that we can um lean on in these difficult storms and trials and i know that like you know i'll call my mom and kind of lay it all out like it's not you know it's like you, you've heard that and the hits just keep coming you know if it's not one thing and it's like multiple things happen at the same time and you're just kind of going through these almost feels like a job moment and and I, I i know calling my mom and just talking with her and she's she's like renee like as she's praying and encouraging me she's like renee the lord is producing something in you the lord is working something in you that you couldn't learn in 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 times of plenty this is something that needs to be learned in scarcity and in crisis like god is doing something a deep work in you and um and and i just love that our lord that our god sees us that he comes to you in the middle of your storm and that those extreme those extreme difficulties those extreme storms are his specialty like i'm reminded of elijah elijah is in this ma major crisis he's suicidal running for his life and this is where god meets him this is where he is fed by ravens i'm reminded of moses where god comes to him um, in a burning bush where Moses is isolated out in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness after 40 years of failure and being overlooked and being a nobody and God uh, steps in and meets Moses right where he's at. I'm reminded of Job and all the chapters. You know, Job lost his whole entire family in the same afternoon and his cattle and everything, everything. Joel, Job loses. And I love, jo I love this. Job 42, 5 says this, my ears have heard you, but now my eyes see you. And so this morning, as we think about our storms and as we think about the things that we're going through, I want to encourage you to stop fighting the storm and, and, and actually lean into the storm. Because I believe that it's the Lord that sends you into the storm. He sends the storm. He sends you into the storm. And he's got you. And He, his invitation to you this morning is he's calling you to a deeper place. He's calling you to, to a deep, the deep well that never runs dry. You know, we're... We're, I'm kind of picking on the disciples this morning. Like they didn't understand it. They had a hard heart. They were angry. They're in the boat. And they thought Jesus was a ghost. But, but here's the thing. They didn't understand the loaves then. But we've been going through this series of Acts. It's so crazy. Like they understood the loaves as you read the book of Acts. After all they went through with Jesus, after hardened hearts and like eyes being open, after Jesus revealing like who he really is, their re their perception of reality changing, the reality of the death and the life and the resurrection of Jesus. Like these disciples are operating on a whole other level. They're being thrown in prison and instead of being angry and fighting it they're singing praise songs they're being stoned to death and as he's Stephen is being stoned to death he's he's saying like he's he's giving this beautiful like gospel message um and i believe like as they're being beheaded as they're being hung on crosses as they are um as the disciples are are um you know the word of god in the new in the in the new testament and acts in the new church is is advancing and all these hardships and all these trials and all these storms are coming up. Oh man, I bet you the disciples are like, I'm going to be raised from the dead. Like crucify me and see what happens. They have a whole new shift. It's like they got the loaves and, the, and now they're, they're not operating on fear. They're not operating on this worldly mindset. They are on a kingdom, um, a kingdom reality. And I believe that that is what the Lord has for you today is calling you to a deeper place. You can only learn that God is provider, that God is healer, that God is compassionate, that God is 
is there for you, that God is the Lord over loss and grief, you can only learn those things when you go through a storm. And so God's invitation to you today is to stop avoiding the storm and lean into it and embrace what he has for you today. And I'm just going to invite you to close your eyes and I'm going to say the words of Jesus for you today. And that is his words to the disciples. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And so, Lord, this morning, whatever battle we are going through, whatever storm, whatever struggle, Lord, I pray that we would take your courage. It is, it is you, the great I am. You are the Lord over the storm. Lord, help us to not be afraid. Lord, I pray, God, that you would do a deep work in our hearts. Lord, that we would be drawn closer to you, that we would know you. that we would not only have knowledge of you, but Lord, that our hearts and our minds and our eyes would see you, Jesus, and what you're doing. And Lord, activate our faith, Lord, so that we can live lives that are bold and courageous for you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you see us, that you know us, that you love us, and that you have us in the palm of your hands. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the reality of Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen. Well, we love you guys. Hope you have a great week and we look forward to seeing you at our small groups in person and also in person at church. We meet every Sunday morning at Ina Heine. And again, you know, meeting online is awesome, but there's nothing like gathering, worshiping together um, and, and just praying with one another and just being together. So we love you. We hope to see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. God bless.